This 26 Sports and RSN Basketball presentation is brought to you by Wolverine Power Cooperative and Great Lakes Energy. Your local electric cooperative is looking out for you. Good evening and welcome to the wheelhouse here in Boyne City and the Rambler Sports Network live broadcast of a high school basketball game between Boyne City and St. Ignace. I'm Andy Bryant alongside Aaron Fritchie and we are excited about this game tonight. It's cold outside. We thought we'd come in and catch a basketball game. Pretty excited about our partnership with My News 26 and Great Lakes Energy and Wolverine Power making that possible. There's great sponsorship so people can view this all over northern Michigan. And this all wouldn't be possible without sponsorship, would it? Absolutely not, and uh, we want our viewers to understand what our sponsors are doing to make this happen, and they've provided, obviously, funds for us to be here. But, uh, we've got our RSN crew is working their tails off out in the uh, communications truck there. So there's a, lot of, there's a lot that goes into bringing you guys these broadcasts, and I want to thank uh, our sponsors here momentarily. Baker College Early College Programs. How does earning both your high school diploma and your associate's degree in one one year past high school and doing it all totally tuition free sound too good to be true not at all thanks to partnerships forged between the Charlevoix, I, Charlevoix Emmett ISD and Baker College students enroll in what is called an early college program early college programs can range through a variety of disciplines and offer enormous advantages for today's students for more information on early college programs and how they can benefit you or your student, contact the Sharm ISD or Baker College and ask about early college programs. Also, WB Builders. I tell Sorry, you what, we you both, to say something yeah, about we Baker both have too. worked with uh, Baker College, and man, they do a fantastic job of, uh, of working with the teachers here in the high school and also getting those kids a chance. Um, and that's what this is all about. This, pro, this production crew that's working right now, they're doing basically on the job training right here. Uh, Baker College does a fantastic job with that. And, and these students really do get high school and college credit at the same time. It's a pretty neat program. It is. So, WB Builders. Uh, WB Builders is a residential construction firm offering a wide range of services such as general contracting, framing and siding, custom cabinetry, as well as spray foam insulation. With a staff of 16 skilled local craftsmen, WB Builders has the capability to see any project from start to finish. And you know WB stands for William Brown. Did you know that? It he, does. And uh, Fantastic guy. Fantastic guy. He is a good guy. He plowed my driveway here the other day amidst that storm, and I, he may have thought it was somebody else's house i don't know but he did fly my driveway and i appreciate that he's a good guy they all are good guys yeah very so. professional if you guys need something built he's the man to call also the jody fritchie agency of farm bureau insurance jody fritchie and her friendly team at farm bureau insurance in east jordan are excited to help design a personalized insurance plan to fit both your needs and your budget. Set up a free consultation with Jody, a licensed insurance advisor, by visiting the Fritchie Agency in East Jordan or online at upnorthinsurance.com. You're somehow, somehow related to her, aren't you? The, uh, the name looks familiar. Yeah. I believe that's my wife. That is your wife. That's right. And again, she does an amazing job. I mean, being new to the insurance business doesn't seem like it. Seems like a seasoned veteran. She's fa fantastic with people. Uh, and I mean, we, we switched over. All our insurance got switched over to her right away we wouldn't have it any other way well she's not a salesperson by nature she likes people that's why she was a teacher for 14 or 15 years and uh, she's enjoying what she's doing yeah you can tell also we'd like to thank pine lake lodge come experience boyne city's newest sports viewing destination pine lake lodge upstairs at 220 south lake street enjoy anything from the full menu like an order of killer wings or a fresh pizza out of the wood-fired oven mm, all while watching <laughs> some of the best high school college or nfl football visible on any of eight big screen tvs when it's game day or any day the pine lake lodge upstairs at 220 south lake is the place to be in boyne uh you had me at wings there on that one that again every time you talk about this sponsor i get hungry uh, but again they're going to do all the games out down there uh trying to partner up with us and have all of uh boyne city's games on and so man what a great place to hang out um awesome uh, setting and good food really well, good food they do th two things that we appreciate and uh one of them is supporting boyne city athletics uh very strongly and uh, providing great food and atmosphere. It really is a good place, so check it out. Yeah, you can take your team down there after the game or take your family down there after the game. They really do a, a nice job. Well, we have... Uh 
the Rambler Rowdies are in the house as usual, and they are fired up tonight. Tonight's theme, as you can kind of see on the screen, is Christmas. And all the Rambler Rowdies are decked out in their Christmas gear, and we'll, we'll be uh, keeping the... Uh, posted on all of their antics tonight there's the lead fan right there the lead rowdy tony cutler who's got the kids ready to go they might not look like they're completely decked out yet but but give it time they will be ready to go in their christmas year soon at tip off and the gym is not the only rowdy place tonight andy the christmas band concert is going on across the hallway that's right there's a lot of people that are just kind of hanging out here all night we got great things going on in the gym we got great things going on in the auditorium having the band concert in there and one of those things where you want to go to it but we had other duties over here to watch a basketball game but hopefully we can catch maybe the end of it or something yeah and i'm hoping to catch a tweet from somebody in the band tonight to let us know how that's going yeah we really uh really wish the band luck and hope they play well but uh so again we love our great new sponsorship and, and uh, all of you guys we thank you for all of that my news 26 remember again great lakes energy and wolverine power are making that possible so people can watch basically from cadillac all the way north um, and we'd like to give a little uh, commercial for great lakes energy let's take a look at what great lakes energy can do in our family we all use electricity when it comes to our Touchstone Energy Cooperative, we all think about it the same way. Because our co-op is... Well, we want to explain a little bit about Great Lakes. Sure, but electricity turns the lights on. But the power is the information that we get from our co-op about efficiency. Safety. Technology. We trust the co-op. That our neighbors. Our friends. Our home. Great, uh, great commercial by Great Lakes Energy, and again, we thank you for your sponsorship to make this all possible and get our viewership um, spread around the state and uh, the country. Again, we, you heard uh, at last broadcast, we uh, tried to get Dylan Williams' grandfather, John Levitt, uh, viewing in from Florida. We've... Uh, definitely got him viewing uh i talked to dylan he said he did did get to view he did get to watch his grandson play all the way down in florida you guys can do that wherever you are uh you just kind of log in and make get the password the password is always the month dot day format and you can view into these games anywhere you are our next broadcast will be friday january 6th after christmas break where we're going to have both the boys and the girls in a, in a double header that night that will take on Harbor Springs. And we're really excited about that one, aren't we, Fritchie, about getting to do both the girls and the guys' teams? You bet it'll be a fun night to see where our program's at across the board. Well, tonight, again, with all the Rambler Rowdy action going on, I'm pretty excited. We're going to have things going on on the court and in the stands. But let's talk a little bit about the game real quick. Uh, Boyne City's rolling pretty good. They're 2-0. and And St. Ignace coming in at 0-3. Talk to their new head coach, Bob Brandstorm. Uh, he was a JV coach for a while. Now this is his first year on the varsity. And what a great guy he is. Just, just all heart over there. And he is trying to get this team. Again, it's a learning experience. Uh, they're 0-3. I asked him. Well, you know, tell us a little bit about that 0-3 record. He said, well, that's right where I thought we'd be. So um, he's not shocked. It's a, it's a team that's, that's really working. He said they're hard workers, and they're getting better every time. Those little victories during the game, uh, even if they're, they're losses, he's trying to teach these kids the fundamentals of basketball. Well, it's uh, I, obviously they're not satisfied to be 0-3, but he's taken over a program. This is his first year after a few years with the JV and they're they're working to build that program one thing at a time and he talked about uh in some of the previous games they'll their their victories will be forcing a team to take off a press or make other changes so they're obviously working to improve and he's already mentioned you know looking forward to the tournament and they have a long-term view of this this thing yeah they're looking big picture i mean it, right away they're they're thinking uh their districts and in, in playoff basketball and that's what you got to do when you when you're coming out and, and losing you're building for the end of the season and he said these kids are just they're great kids uh hard workers and they're always improving he's had some 
you know, troubles with injuries. Uh, David Levig, uh, broken collarbone, so he obviously won't see action for a while. Tucker Shepard, uh, good ball player. He's out with uh, some knee surgery issues and stuff. So, you know, he's got some some season kind of crippling injuries, no pun intended. Uh, but but he's got some good players that, that are learning and improving every day. And looking at what they've done the last three games on the court, X's and O's wise, you can see that you know they're they're building their program from the fundamentals. You know they play uh, almost exclusively half court, man to man, at least from what we've seen. Um, they are a pretty solid defensive team, so they're starting with those fundamentals, and I'm sure they'll expand from there as the year goes on. We've talked about that with the Ramblers too. You know, trying to figure out what you've got exactly, putting the pieces together to build something bigger. And let's talk about the Ramblers again, 2-0, and and um, they're also learning, like you were just saying, trying to put the pieces together, and uh, probably a little better athletic team than St. Ignace here tonight, but that doesn't mean much. I mean, they're, they're as Coach Redmond said, uh, they're 17-year-old kids. Anything can happen. I mean, they have a good night, bad night, whatever. Um, you got to be ready at all times. Um, they have a big matchup against McBain tomorrow night, and some of the concerns uh, from all of us here are that they don't overlook St. Ignace here tonight, uh, preparing for that big one against McBain, who's who's really tough this year. Um, so that's what we're kind of watching for tonight, making sure there's not a letdown against St. Ignace because they know they're 0-3. Uh, but again, uh, anything can happen with 17-year-old kids. Yeah, it'll be interesting. You know, we've got uh, a, a relatively big team, about 12 players, and uh, it's a good opportunity. It's, it's sort of difficult to play two games in a row. However, you get an opportunity to try some things out, get your legs loosened up after the weekend, the shovel in the sidewalk. Uh, <laughs> and, and, you know, not, not that we're overlooking St. Ignis, but we're, Boyne is going to try and put some things together to uh, looking forward to tomorrow night. Well, let's uh, let's take it to a look at our Rambler Rowdies who are now coming in with, uh, I think we have a visitor here tonight. Uh, look at that. Santa Claus has made an appearance here. The Rambler Rowdies bringing him in, dressed as reindeer, bringing in Santa Claus. That's got to be a first here for the Rambler Rowdies. And they are followed by all of the Rambler Elves. Look at that, all decked out in red and green and all of their Christmas costumes. Man, you don't see this very often, do you? I'm just looking at the outfits here. We got some uh, pilgrim socks, Santa Claus pilgrim socks, uh, lots of elf hats and reindeer antlers. It's good stuff. I know that when I left the house, my young boys, uh, when I told them that Santa Claus was going to be here tonight, they uh, were pretty excited and wanted to come. I, I don't know if they actually made it here, but, man, they heard Santa and a bunch of elves were going to be here. They wanted to be here. So, again, not only some great action on the floor, but in the stands are Rambler Rowdies, as you can see now, with red and green. They are filling in and getting their spots all set up. And there's Tony Cutler leading the charge. Look at that. Mr. Man. Rambler. The old, uh, the old Christmas. Gotta love it. Makes me uh, have a little Christmas spirit, doesn't it? <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Look at There's uh, Peyton Bauman there in the uh, Christmas tree uniform. That's great. Look at that. Reindeer has got everybody there. And that BC right there stands for Boing Christmas, baby. Boing Christmas. Good participation by the Rambler Rowdies. Christmas cheer for everybody around. That's, that's fantastic. Well, we are at zeros on the warm-up clock, and we are getting ready for tip-off. But, of course, we are going to do our national anthem here. And we will open up the mic so you guys can hear the national anthem here by our PA announcer.
that's a great shot by Ryan Bentley, who's doing the uh, doing our wireless camera here tonight. That was a long walk down the line there. More exercise than he's had all week. That was. That's some good work by uh, by Bentley on the wireless cam. And in case you didn't know, we talked a little bit about the production uh, truck outside and uh, the director here tonight because Randy Calcaterra is coaching our JV basketball team. We had Anna Harmeline take over as director for the first 10, 20 minutes here to get us started, and she's doing a fantastic job. Good job, Army. A little, uh, little chattery in the, in the truck, but, uh, but she's doing fantastic. Well, let's talk about our starting lineups here, Fridgie, and, uh, and, and see what we got here for, for St. Ignace. For St. Ignace, we have number zero, Sean Livingston. And in talking with Coach, he's, he's one of these raw talents that's just a hard worker and proven every game. Sophomore, yep. Yep. Number one, Marcus St. John is a junior. Number four, Nate Cosley. We have their captain, number 32, Preston Mayo. They're big guys, 6'6". Six, six. And he's, uh, they call him the mailman. He delivers all the time. He's the leader on the floor. Um, also got a 4.0 grade point average. Wants to be a pharmacist. So, and uh, averaging well over a double-double. He has had at least one 20-20 game already this year. And then we have number 44, uh, David Van Heuvelen, the fridge. The fridge, they call him. So starting lineup there for St. Ignis. And, uh, again, Coach has a lot of great things to talk about uh, with these guys. And uh, I'm pretty excited to watch the fridge and uh, the mailman uh, do some uh, do some damage in our, in our low post here. So. Starting out for Boyne, Eric Carson, K. McPherson, Jacob Ager, Dom Archie, and Mason Gardner. So looking at Preston Mail, you can see he's a big fella. He's going to be uh, jumping up against Ager. And good size, good size on Preston Mail. Right? He's... Oh. It's interesting, size-wise, it's similar to what we had here against Grayling last week with Jacob Ager uh, giving up a lot of size and gaining a lot of a lot of muscle on the big guy. Ager won that tip. Ager won that tip, and uh, Gardner Gardner missed the layup off that, but uh, Rambler Rowdy's just got done throwing up snow. It's snowing in here for a minute. Oh, Mr. Hertel's not happy either. That snow's getting on the court. Cleaning it up. Nice little uh, steal and coast to coast by Dom Archie there. I'm surprised he didn't go into the wall and take out a dent there. But two to nothing right now. And again, the activity of Boynt City is continued from last game as they get another steal there and bring it down. And then there's Nate Cosley with a steal back. And there's going to be a timeout. Yeah, one of by the coach Brandstorm. One of the questions here for St. Ignace, talking to their coach and uh, looking at their previous three games has been their ball handling. They're struggling a little bit in that area. And so I guess we're not surprised to see uh, Coach Redmond throw the press on early just to shake things up a little bit. I'd imagine that's why St. Ignace got a quick timeout to make a plan. Yeah, it could get ugly real quick if they don't uh, secure that ball. He, he was talking about, again, yeah, their ball handling has been a struggle and then the turnovers. And they go hand in hand obviously if you don't have anybody that can securely bring the ball up uh, you're going to have a lot of turnovers and especially uh, against Boynt City they're, it's like yeah. blood in the water for sharks they're going to see that you're struggling yeah, and they're going to jump on you for a young team you know what, what he's going to do in that timeout is just take a second to tell his players about what the press is and give them an idea of where to look uh, for an open pass and they break the press kind of in a sloppy way but they got down and they're in their half court set here Marcus St. John, he's going to take a short little jumper, and that's no good. Livingston gets the rebound. And look at look at the size differential for Boyd City and St. Ignis. I mean, across if, the board, yeah. If you don't have mail in there for St. Ignis, it, it is uh, every player for Boyd City a little bit bigger than their St. Ignis counterparts. And look at the activity, too. I mean, there's Mail with the first look inside. Back out to St. John, and he drops a three. Man. And they take an early lead, 3-2. That, 
against St. John. I, how tall do you think he is, Rich? Oh, I don't want to guess. I don't guess. <laughs> well, he just dropped a three, so. Well, and early St. Ignace is going to use it to their advantage. It's hard to steal a ball from a guy that's uh, however tall he is. Yeah. Yeah, Boynt City ball out of bounds here. Gardner with a nice little short jumper off the mark. Ager with the rebound. He's going to go back in. And they're going to call a travel on that one. Yeah, not a bad play, though. You get the ball right there on the block, and your tendencies go back up with it. Not a bad play. That's a good little matchup. He, him and the fridge are going to be going at it down low all night. Good hustle there by Dom Archie. Well, and that's why I throw the ball back under your own basket. You just hope you get lucky, and uh, St. Ignace kicked it, kicked it in the bleachers. You, you, you're telling me that Dom did that on purpose? That's what you're saying? No. <laughs> uh, Ethan Hewitt and Max Vondra are going to check in for the Ramblers. And it's Point City's ball underneath their own basket. St. Ignace is a little bit of a zone here for yeah, the first I'm, time. I'm looking at that too. That we know of. They, they're normally man to man, straight up. There's Carson for three. No good. Mail with the rebound. Tries to get it out to St. John and. Somehow Ager. threw it over his head. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We have a tweet from Rihanna Furness. Supporting Boyne from the auditorium while playing the xylophone, band geeks rule, and so does basketball. She guesses. <laughs> she guesses, uh, yes. Props for uh, hiding that from Mr. Ivy, I guess. Exactly. Yeah, shouldn't she well be done. doing something right now? Yeah. Good job, Ray. Uh, well, Max Vondra just uh, scored a nice little hook. It's four to three now. Did she say she's playing the xylophone? Yeah, I guess so. Really? Yeah. Easy Hewitt handling the ball up top. St. John right up in his grill. Trevor King in for the Ramblers with the ball now. And now there's Carson. Short Hewitt with the rebound. Carson, uh, that's 0 for 2 for him at the three-point arc. He's going to take it right in against Mayo. And that one's no good. Well, as far as St. Ignace is concerned, that's not bad. You can take a, you give up a three that doesn't go in. Uh, unfortunately, you give up a rebound to a five foot two uh, Huey Bear Hewitt. Well, he's, I mean, he's the E train. Here's St. John handling the ball out here on the wing. Gets it back to the fridge. In the mail, back out to fridge. Kicks it out to Cosley. That one's no good. And. Carson gets it, but puts it right back into the fridge, and he's going to get no. Back up strong, big fella. Back up strong. And they're going to call a foul on the E train. Almost came right into our lap here. Yeah, it was probably a good call, but again, we talked about this on the other end. That's why you don't throw the ball under your uh, defensive basket. It's Nothing true. good's going to happen right there. Uh, Rambos were lucky to escape that bucket. Yeah, it gave the fridge an uh, easy look right there. He couldn't, couldn't convert, but. Uh, Still their ball underneath here. Into Mail. Dylan Williams now in, giving Mail some good defense. Gets the rebound. Going to be a tie up here. Oh, they're going to call a foul. Well, that's lucky for St. Ignace. I mean, uh, Mail missed that shot. Uh, Williams challenged him pretty well. Uh, but sometimes you get those big guys that they don't like missing shots. They want to go get it no matter what. And I thought that foul was going to be on Mail, but that's lucky yeah. for them. They go in right, right over the back. Vondra gets it into Gardner. Gardner draws a double team, and Hewitt had a good idea, but sliding his foot. Yeah, I just want to remind you that your first quarter here is brought to you by WB Builders. Again, thank you for that sponsorship. You got the whole first quarter. <laughs> well, Boyne with a little bit of pressure there. Vonda, Max Vondra with the steal and gets the foul. I don't think he can go anywhere without getting contact. Yeah. The man just lives for contact. There's Hewitt for three. 
The Rambler's a little cold shooting from beyond the arc. You know, Vondra has a knack for getting the ball, though. Somehow he gets his hands on it. He's a strong kid, and it comes near him. He's, he's going to grab that sucker. Well, he's not afraid of contact, and that, that's how you get your hands on it all the time. Scrum here on the floor. And they're going to call a foul. Well, they're going to call a foul there on that scrum on the floor, but let's take a look at the, the steal here by Trevor King uh, on the ground. The, that's the kind of stuff that's contagious. You want to see that out of your defense, and uh, your bench gets into it, and the offense gets into it. That's a great play. Yeah, get on the floor. Get on the floor and get after it. That's what it's there for. <laughs> In Boyne stand very active. There's Gardner trying to force it in there. And he, how, how he got that through there, I don't know, but good little bank shot. Well, that's his game. You know, catch the ball at the high post. He can shoot that shot very well, but he's also good at getting to the hole. And you've seen it the, the last time down the floor. He gets in there, uh, jump stop, and can dish it out, too. So that's a big part of Boyne's offense. And Cameron Lavallee, I think it is, right? How he pronounced that? And... He just missed a three and went out of bounds, and now it's Boyne City's ball. So again, with all the action going on, it's still only 6-3, Boyne City. I would uh, I would agree with uh, Coach Brandstorm. The San Diego team works hard. They're really working hard. I mean, they might not have the athletes that Boyne City has, but they are working hard. and getting on the floor and playing good defense. That, that's what you ask your team, you know, at the beginning of the year, to play together, have a positive attitude, and the rest of it will come. That's that's what they do. Dom Archie thought he was going to go with a lob to Gardner, but it's into Connor Gabos who's in the game now. And Gabos set a record, I think, last week for the fastest four fouls ever, right? <laughs> it's, uh, he was pretty proud of that in class. That's right. And Gardner... It's the bucket and the foul. And they're going to call that. This is a good finish here. I think we're going to see a replay of this, but this is Gardner show you his left hand crossover, takes the contact real nicely and puts it up softly with his left hand. It's a great play. That's right. All you young players, Coach Rattel, that's what he always preached when he was in there, that left side, left hand. I mean, if you go with your right hand, that's going to get blocked. Yeah, and he did a nice job going up in the air to take contact before really trying to shoot the shot. And that's how you get the foul, and that's how you make some space to get a clean shot off. I know in my household, uh, we try to get our boys to dribble with their left hand. And they say, I don't want to dribble with my weak hand. And my wife jumps in right away because she's left-handed and say, it's not a weak hand, it's your other hand. <laughs> well, we, I try to get my kids to brush your teeth with their left hand, but it honestly just makes a mess. <laughs> That's right. What do you want them to do, be able to use their left hand or make a mess? Which one? Right? So all these kids in here are dribbling with their left hands. You know their parents put up with a lot. Yes. <laughs> Now, Boyne City ball, 9-3 to three here in our WB Builders first quarter. Gardner off the mark. Mail with the rebound. St. John going to bring it up against the pressure from Kane McPherson. And I'm impressed with St. John. I, he's quick. I don't think I could guard him. Cosley. draws the foul. Yeah, and this stuff on a defense, St. Ignace, a big part of their offense is getting in the lane, making something happen, drive and kick. Uh, and you have to be conscious as defenders uh, to keep your hands to yourself. Well, that was uh, Eric Carson's second foul right there, and he almost picked up a third. Luckily, he just tipped the ball out of bounds, but that's his uh, second foul, and he's going to go to the bench, I'm sure, for the rest of the first half. Ethan Hewitt checking in for him. Mail with the ball, nice little hook shot right over Archie. And he's looking, Archie's looking at Coach Redmond like, what do you want me to do there? I'm sure it would be something like, don't let him get the ball. <laughs> They're going to have to pour some eager on that, I think. Yeah. There's Cosley with a steal. He's going to get it to the fridge. And that one, a little too hard. It's a great little uh, fast break by St. Ignis. Couldn't convert. There's Shulock. Missed that layup. It was highly contested. Boyne City going to reset here. Kane McPherson going to take it in against Mayo, and he's going to get the bucket. Another great left hand. I think that was a lefty floater there. Now they're taking it right in against Mayo. Again, we saw this in our last game against Grayling. They're used to going in against the bigs here. 
St. John. Yeah. Launched an air ball there. Well, we saw Mail down here in the post. I think he missed that last one, but uh, that's what uh, Grayling did not get with their big guy. Ager and Archie and those guys did a fantastic job last week against the big guy, keeping him out of the paint. I think we're going to see Ager in there for Archie, would be my guess, here the next day. Yeah, one shot over Archie, and the coach is going to make a change here. Not that it happened again. There's Archie right there. Great little turnaround again. He's improved on his footwork. Oh, that's that big guy syndrome. You miss that shot, and you're going back to get it. <laughs> but that really, that's where you want Archie to catch the ball. He's going to get the ball up to the rim one way or the other. And yeah, I, I, we talked about his footwork last game, and uh, his, his jumping ability is getting better, too. Looked like he got up a little bit to shoot that jump shot. He did. There's Gardner with the steal. He's going to go up against Mayo and not convert. Again, probably looking for the dunk and didn't know what to do once he got in the air. Mayo with the rebound. Ager over his back. Yeah, you're not going to get that. Not going to get that ball from Mayo. He's got to get on the other side of him. Ager does. Not, not an aggressive, real aggressive player, Mayo, but he's big. He's, he's in a, the way. You can't he's just a big go guy over. And he's got some skills, yeah. And speaking of that, Aker goes right up against him and scores the bucket and the foul. Yeah, it's intimidating going up there against the big guy. We, we may see this here, this Aker hoop uh, with the foul. Look at that. And as you can see, that that's intimidating to go up against that, and you're very likely to get your shot blocked. But and he's swinging. Really, he's swinging for absolutely. the fences. But he's got two fouls now. Going to sit maybe the rest of the half, maybe not that long, but going to the bench. Yeah, I don't know about the depth of St. Ignace, so I don't know how long they can afford to sit male with two fouls. There's some ball handling there by Tucker Shepard. I mean, I'm sorry, not Tucker Shepard, Joel Dodds. Joel Dodds, good ball handling, but turnover. Well, they're scrappy, and in, in, in talking with uh, Coach Brandstorm about St. Ignis, their, their football team made a good run, and so he didn't have a lot of players uh, in practice early. He said uh, they, they just don't do a lot of the summer programs and summer stuff and summer camps, and so he said, you know, for the amount of basketball that these kids play, he said they're, they're doing okay. They're improving uh, every game. Uh, well, as you know, up, up here with so many smaller schools, we have a lot of a lot of athletic programs that have kids doing double or triple duty and uh, as a basketball player you get Gardner he's gonna get fouled on the floor there but as a as a player it takes you a month or so to get your feet under you and and feel that basketball the right way yeah he told us he said uh, the first day of practice he had what three players uh, again because a lot of them in that long run on the football team and so it's tough to get the reps in these guys are going to improve, definitely. There's Ager. Ager at the buzzer goes right up over somebody and tips that one in. And I'm impressed with him. The two games that we broadcast, I'm real impressed with Jacob Ager. Let's take a look here. There's the Gardner miss. Watch him go up. Look at the hops there. Yeah. And I mean this with all due respect to Jager, who I love as a student and a person. He's... He's not built as a basketball player, but he's finding his roles. He's finding a way to make a difference, and he's worked hard to get his body in shape, be athletic and agile, and you can see it translates on the floor. You've got these football players that are figuring out how to be effective on the court, and, and that's fun to watch. I really I really do like that. Yeah, he's uh, he's one of the players the coaches talk about. Uh, you know, man, it's one of those things, one of those kids where you tell him what to do, you teach him something, and he does it. And you know how hard that is being a teacher, being a coach. Uh, when you get a kid that listens to you, buys into what you're teaching him, and does it, he's just going to improve. And he, and we've seen that in the last couple games. He's fantastic. Well, at the end of the first quarter here, uh, 15 to 5, and we have Santa Claus in the corner. Uh, little kids get to go over and sit on Santa's lap. Take a look at that. Rambler Rowdies are extending them to the little Rambler Rowdies. And look at that. Our own... Uh, Jacob Kelsey, Kelts. Kelsey Claus. <laughs> that, that just warms my heart, I'll tell you. A little Christmas cheer. Well, 15 to 5. 
And Boyne City with a good lead. Hey, that kid looked almost as scared as Kelts did holding him. <laughs> Santa Claus looked a little fearful over there. Yeah. Good little give a go there. Yeah. Loose ball here for St. Ignis. They're going at, and Kane's going to come down with it, and they're going to he's going to draw a foul. Nate, Nate Cosley got a little aggressive going after him. Our uh, second quarter is brought to you by Pine Lake Lodge. Remember, if you want some wings, pizza, and watch some good sports, head on down to Pine Lake Lodge. Heck, you can do it right now and watch the game down there. Well, we're happy to have another place to eat and watch TV in town, right? Yeah, we've been we've been waiting for all these nice restaurants to have another place to go. Yep, it's been a great addition to the to Boyne City for sure. Well, Kane McPherson at the line. He knocks him down. Boyne City still in their press. Again, this is where St. Ignis might have some problems here if they don't have a ball hander. Although I think Nate Cause is doing okay bringing that ball up. Just protecting it with his body. Here's St. John. Little dribble. There it is. And oh. again, they're spreading out the floor. Little dribble drive. And oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Wow. Wow. We have got to see that. I, I've said this many times. Nobody's going to want to step in front of Hager. And Nate Cosley did. And oh my goodness. This is. This is amazing. I can't believe Nate Cosley stood in there and took this. Man, oh my goodness. Can we see that again? Can we go back on that? Go back on that. Go back yeah, on that. Be a, that's going to be an offensive guys, uh, foul. And this is a great play on defense. If we pause that just a second here, you can see the defender slides in, get his feet set, gets his feet set, and he knows he's going to get hit. I think what happens is he hits his head on the floor here as he comes down. Watch his head bounce right here. Bang. Oh, my goodness. Yep. Eager may have as well. But he's, Man, that that's uh, that, that's that's amazing. I, I, again, that, that's an offensive foul on Ager, but holy cow. Yeah, and really, this can be a dangerous play, but to be honest, the St. Ignace player is there in time, and uh, it was a great great defensive player. And my uh, my respect for Nate Cosley just went way up, way up. I mean, that's, that's a, that is a brave move right there to do that. And, and that's well, the epitome of taking one for your team there. You know, there's there's nothing glorious about having the trainer come over and check your eyes. Yep. Um, but well, we hope that he's OK. The trainers are checking him out right now. He is up on his feet getting a ovation from the crowd here. Yeah, that was scary. Very scary. I mean, you, you, everybody was having a good time in here and then that happened and it just there was a hush over the crowd. I think we're all just amazed that he stood in against the biggest guy. Yeah, <laughs> on and, the and you know, the, defensively, the reason you do that as a player is that it, it changes the game a little bit. Ager's got to be a little bit more hesitant when he uh, goes to get up in the air. Not that he gets way up in the air, but uh, it changes your mindset as an offensive player if you know that the defense is willing to take charges. And he's got two fouls, and they try the long ball here, but that one's picked off by Shulak. Here comes Trevor King. Great little fake there. And they're going to set up in their offense. Man, I still can't believe he took that shot. <laughs> Man. Good little rebound there by Sean Livingston. Only a, a sophomore, remember. And he, he's improving like crazy. Just getting better and better. Just needs the more experience. Good rebound. Let's see what they do here without mail on the floor. Trying to spread that floor so they can get that penetration. They actually look like they have better motion right now than they did earlier. I don't know if that's because Mail's not in there trying to feed him the ball, but uh, there's a lot more movement at this point. Well, there was still that five seconds call, but um, <laughs> that was that was. That was we'll, uh, <laughs> and looking down here at the other end as well, St. Ignis uh, briefly was in a zone earlier in the back end. Man, one of the advantages for St. Ignis with these shorter players without Mail in 
in there is when you're playing man-to-man -man defense, you're matched up with a guy, and it makes it a lot easier to box out and get a defensive rebound. So I don't know if that's why he's gone back to this, but uh, it should help their rebounding. Oh, good pick and roll there by Ager. Great fundamental basketball right there. Well, let's see if Sanitas can get it all the way down the floor. That's a great yeah, yeah. offensive possession by St. Ignace. You can tell these players know each other really well. They broke that press with the pass over the top, which is about at least the third time that's happened. Uh, but that was a great, they moved the ball, they got in the lane when it opened up and got the layup. That was a great play. Yeah, and Joel Dodds split the defenders and gets a layup out of it. And I think there's some... Let's take a look at this pick and roll here by Shulock and Ager. Great screen, opens up to the ball, squares out. Only thing wrong with that, he shot with his right hand. Can we still give him that one? Uh, yeah, <laughs> we'll give it to him this time. Yeah. Yep. Fundamentals. Yeah, and it was a great read by Shulock. You know, both guys had their eyes on Shulock. Ager slipped, slipped along the backside there and was wide open. Well, again, we thank uh, Pine Lake Lodge for sponsoring this second quarter here with Boynton City way up 19 to 7. Good pass by Gardner to Dillwill. Dylan Williams. Big Dillwill, baby. That's right. Hope your grandparents are watching down in Florida. Nice little bucket. Let's watch St. Ignis here spread the floor. They're just looking for, they're just looking for an opening, aren't they? They're just looking for a way to penetrate and get in there. Yeah, you do. You're, just, work, right you're there. just working oh, angles. Oh, man. Well, that's a couple, okay, we've seen that a couple times. It's, it's a great it's a great take by St. John. He does a nice job getting in the lane, just a little bit indecisive there. Whatever happened, I'm not sure, but uh, well, it's great I, for their offense. He's worried about getting blocked. I mean, a guy that size, he's worried about getting everything blocked. So he stops. He had it wide open. But it's an essential part of their offense. It breaks down the defense. you got a guy who's rotating. Oh. Oh. <laughs> over the top. oh my goodness! Over wow. the top. Oh my god! That was a thumper. Unbelievable! I didn't think he was gonna get that one down. Wow! Woo. Mason Gardner. Let's take a look. You can hear the Rambler Rowdies enjoying wow. that one. We got the crew coming over here to watch the replay. And the fridge didn't get there in time, and he dunks over him. Oh my god! Wow, let's take another look from a different angle here. Yeah, can we watch that again? Man, let's take a look at this. Look, look at the fridge rotating over, not there in time. And that's a thunderous look, dunk. Yeah, that was a great play. <laughs> wow. Fantastic. That That is... Got the Rambler Rowdies ready to go now, as if they weren't already. Yeah, and the way the Grayling game went a couple days ago, Gardner was sort of out of his element. There's a big guy inside, there is pressure on the outside, and he never really got going in the game, but... Uh, you think that'll get him going? <laughs> that might help. <laughs> wow. That's fantastic. Here's Trevor King. He's going to take it right in. Nice little short jumper. I think he was going to try to dunk that, too, but yep. ran out of space there. <laughs> it's, it's contagious. Well, you can see Mayo is back in the game for St. Ignis. And right away, I don't know if uh, you had Jacob Robinson might have gone over the back of, of Mayo. And that's what we talked about. He might not be aggressive, but he's a big body. And you try to go to get a rebound, he's in the way, you're going you're gonna to follow him. And now here he is at the line. Senior Hertel must be at home or in her classroom, Green Pavers, but uh, she's got a quick Twitter poll for us. Should the commentators sing Christmas carols during halftime? Survey Monkey, Twitterless Brian. <laughs> you know, uh, I don't know if that's supposed to be like making fun of me, but I don't care. Somebody needs to get up there really and take Twitter. her tweeter away. That's right. Oh and and my nobody gosh. wants to say, hear me sing, I can tell you that. <laughs> yeah, you guys can check out my uh, Twitter account if I ever get one. I thought Mr. Hertel took that away, but uh. Uh, <laughs> well, they're not they're not falling for St. Ignis, but they're getting their boards. It was the fridge for three, and they're going to call a foul on Jacob Robinson on that box out after the fridge shot. He's going to get three free throws. Let's take a look. There he goes, and Robinson just backs into him too much. A little too early. 
this would be a one and one that was on the floor. On the floor. Oh, they call it on the floor. Okay. Well, and Jacob Robinson pulling a counter Gabos. Two fouls. Well, Jacob in about Robinson two came into my classroom today with a glass full of chocolates, and he knows he's not getting a better grade for it. He's got pretty good grade anyway, but he wanted me to say something for him, and that is Jacob Robinson for three. <laughs> he wanted to hear that on the air once. So there you go, J Rob. <laughs> The E-Train takes it in and Mail swats that one out of bounds. <laughs> well, I think Jacob Robinson, you might say Jacob Robinson for three. It might be three fouls might here in a minute if he fouls. gets back in. Yeah, yeah. Or three minutes on the bench if you shoot one. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Things that Coach Redmond doesn't want to hear. <laughs> Jacob Robinson for three. Well, under four to go here until halftime, 24 to eight. And time for Point City to work on some stuff. There's a good screen and roll. Counter Gabos lost the handle. Yeah, that was a well-executed play, though. They had, it was open. Like, yeah, this is this is a time when you work on your on your fundamentals, work on some plays and stuff. Try not to get anybody hurt, those kind of things. I mean, it, it, St. Ignace, not, or no slouch, uh, but obviously having a hard time matching up with Point City. So you got to stay focused and work on some stuff when you're playing in these type of games. Yeah, they're struggling to put it all together. But you know, this is good for St. Ignace too. They get to work against the press. They get to, you know, Point's going to get their um, bench involved a little bit, get everybody's legs stretched out. They got a big game tomorrow. So. And I think St. Ignace is doing some good things. I really do. I mean, they're again, they're learning. And they're getting better, and you'll see that. You'll see these little victories that we talked about with Coach Brandstorm. Yeah, and talking to him before the game, Coach Brandstorm does a nice job, I think, keeping his players together. They're playing for each other. They're playing hard. They're working on things. And, yeah, as he said, they understand the win-loss column and how that works, but they're, they're just trying to get better, and that's, that's what this is all about. going to get called for a foul there. Too, uh, too, too aggressive on the defensive stance there. Yeah, well, this press lengthens the game a little bit, both because both teams are going to be in the double bonus at this point, but it stretches the time out and allows you to get, get guys uh, some exercise, get your bench involved. We'll see how long he sticks with that. Point has basically a reserve uh, core in there. Thomas Saint Gables for a good box out. Yeah. Now the Ramble route, he's got pretty loud there for that free throw. So this is interesting from an offensive point. You've got the reserves in there for Boyne, and you're, you're looking to see where your shots are going to come from. There's Kane McPherson putting it on the floor and getting to the rim, but... There's that deep ball we were talking about. Livingston runs that one down. Gets it to Dodds. Dodds takes it right down underneath. And they're going to call a travel on that. Well, still the right play. Still the right play. He had an opening. You take your guy baseline if you can. And you yeah, may he's... be like him to make a different decision at the end there. <laughs> he's been pretty aggressive when he gets the ball. I like the way Dodds gets to the basket. Now Mason Gardner's check back in. Like you said, they're working on their who's going to score, who's going to be the leader out there. Here's Eric Carson, still cold from behind the arc. And the fridge is going to bring the ball up. He's picked his pocket. Connor Gabo, see if he can hang on and get all the way down. Fan favorite, Connor Gabos. Here comes Dodds for St. Ignis. Everybody on the floor. Vondra again, contact. Here's Gardner all the way up to Kane. Taking it in. And Kane's a great finisher. You've seen that a couple times already. So. Yeah, you got to be careful here. The fridge and Gabos, good matchup. It's going to be a foul. Yeah. <laughs> you see that coming. Yeah. Well, and what the boys trying to do, they're trying to get a quick trap or a quick steal, um, have St. Ignace make a mistake, and then they sort of back off into just pressure man. Well, speaking of pressure man, 
There's Fridge after his pocket There's was picked. There's a little pressure on that man having to dribble halfway down the floor. That's right. That's nerve-wracking. He I had think to really focus on that. I think he that. slowed down so he could take an extra dribble, though. He, he just did. didn't handle the ball that much. I love it. I remember doing that, like, in seventh grade. We yep. had to time out your steps and your dribbles and make sure you didn't trip and fall. And he really thought about that later. Oh, no. I think he was thinking about dunking, too. That's in the air tonight. Yeah, he, uh, he, I think he was trying to get his feet ready to dunk and didn't know if he wanted to do the tomahawk or the reverse jam. Yeah, a little indecisive there. Sometimes that happens. You got to just go with the backup layup. <laughs> Couldn't convert on his free throws. Let's see Max Vondry get it. There's a backdoor cut by Carson. And there comes Kane all the way around. He's going to go up against Mayo. Rebound by Livingston. Again, Kane's shot was changed by Mayo. Gabos sensing blood in the water. He wants to get another steal. And there go. Oh, nice job by Gardner. Gardner to be in position. Hey, you feel it. So we'll see another charge taken here. Uh, I don't know if we can get Gardner right in here, but really he's pretty close to that baseline. And what your coach will teach you when you do that is get your foot right up tight to the baseline so they can't get past you. You give him nowhere to go. And uh, unless he stops and is willing to kick it back out, you're going to take a charge. That was, that was a nice defensive play. Gardner did a nice job selling it too, kind of coming up and acting like he was throwing farther than he actually was. Archie threw that one a little farther than he needed to as well off Carson's hands, I believe, looking for the backdoor cut. Lucas Day is in the ballgame now for the Ramblers. And as you can see, Boyne's going to back up and just play half-court man here. Nate Cosley, get, glad to see him back in the game after that collision with Ager. There's Kane with a fast break. Layup. He's climbing the scoring charts. He's got a bunch of layups. That's a, probably four layups, I'm guessing, here. The Rambler Rowdies have noticed, uh, as you may have, Lucas Day has checked in to the pleasure of Boyne City. That's right. If he could do something here offensively, the place would erupt. Kind Number of a fan 22, favorite. there he is. Absolute fan favorite. I saw him between classes today lounging in his socks playing Tetris there, just relaxing. That's the kind of kid he is, laid back. <laughs> everybody loves the guy, and he loves everybody else. That's right. Well, it looks like St. Ignis is going to hold the ball here. Last 13 seconds to go before halftime. Here comes the screen, high screen. Uh, didn't roll with it. There it is to paint or to mail, and he got it. That's the most passes maybe St. Ignis has had on a possession yet. That, that was really nice. That looked really good. That was a good offensive set. A little patient with the ball. Well, 32 to 10, Boyne City with a commanding lead. And we have a sideline reporter, Jake Kelts, as Santa Claus is going to interview Coach Redman here real quick. Take it away, Santa Kelts. Well, I've traveled all the way from the North Pole for this game. It was a long hike, but it was well worth it. Coach, we got our nice list here, and it appears that Dom Archie made the nice list. Can you believe this? Oh, I would never believe that, no. <laughs> well, Coach, I don't see your name anywhere on this list, so what have you done this year? I believe that. I believe that. I've been <laughs> with these guys all year. Just know I've been watching. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Coach. Back to you guys. i tell you what. I got to love Coach Redmond being a good sport on that one. The kids, the Rambler Rowdies had a naughty and nice list. Obviously, uh, the naughty list was the St. Ignace players, and the nice list was the Boyne City players. Good creative yeah. stuff from the Rambler Rowdies. It's, uh, it, and you said it, he is a great sport with us. You've got kids involved with RS, RSN. You've got Calc back there. There's all kinds of ideas, and I don't think he ever knows what's coming, and he's always a good sport about it, which can be kind of a hassle when you're trying to get in the locker room to talk to your team. So yeah. we appreciate it, Coach. He understands what it does for the program. And I, again, thank you for being such a good sport every time we come at him with this stuff. Well, at uh, half court right now, we have Santa fresh off his sideline interview, and he's going to do a little uh, holiday surfing here, a little Santa surfing going on. This is great. If you haven't ever seen this, Rambler Rowdy is doing a little surfing. This is good. Uh, might want to put this drill into your next basketball practice. This is kind of nice. You can see Santa there setting up the stage making sure he doesn't fall and hurt any of his elves. But check this out, this is a cool thing here. I don't think they understand, they gotta roll. They gotta roll, there we they're go. Trying. They're trying, they're trying. 
Santa's a little, a little bit more jolly. There he is. Yeah, they got to keep moving. Ride the wave. It's going to be a short wave if they don't keep moving. Oh, no. Santa takes a spill. Does Santa know how to swim? I don't, I don't know. It's all ice up there. Well, uh, after Santa gets done surfing, then we also have more shenanigans going on here with the Ramble Rowdies. Uh, we're going to have a game between uh, the Elves versus the Reindeer in mini basketball. And, of course, Santa Claus is going to be our ref. And we're going to have people holding mini, mini baskets. Again, many, many ways to get the Rambler Rowdies involved. Unbelievable. Yeah, we hope nobody gets hurt here. We want to uh, make sure all the children get their presents this year. Santa doesn't need to lose any reindeer or any elves. <laughs> uh, yeah, Santa gets all ready for his referee debut. You can uh, say there's no such thing well, as Santa. Yeah, oh, good, good music for the production truck. Speaking of the production truck, every time we make references to the production truck, um, we just say the truck, and I, I don't know if you guys know what that means. Once a new visual imaging program uh, purchased a actual truck, a big, very large trailer that has all the equipment inside the trailer, so they can set it up and keep it set up. It makes it a lot easier to transport the games. Right now, it's parked outside our gym, and we do all of our games right here with all the stuff hooked up out there in the truck. So when we make references to uh, the kids in the truck, those are all of our production crew, our production crew. And then, while you're getting that uh, crew list ready there, I wonder if we can get at some point tonight a shot of the crew working back there in the, in the trailer. Yeah, we'll have there, to see if we can get, get uh, Ryan Bentley, our wireless sideline uh, cameraman, to get into the truck and show you how cool it is in there. Well, and you know, our, our audience, they, they see this uh, broadcast, they see the game, they see us occasionally, uh, to their dismay perhaps, but <laughs> they don't get to see all this behind the, behind the scenes stuff, our camera folks and our, our crew working back there in the trailer. So it'd be maybe if we could give them a, a visual for what's happening to bring this broadcast. It, it is uh, it is amazing what these kids do. Again, uh, technical director for tonight is Jared Franks. He's out of Petoskey doing a fantastic job TDN for us. Uh, replace tonight, uh, Haley Fogo. She's been busy tonight with all the cool plays we got going on. Haley Fogo, stick Fogo. Well done. <laughs> audio tonight is Anna Harmelin after she got done being director for a little bit. She's now on audio. Graphic stats and tweets is all Lauren Fitzpatrick doing hey, that's, a fantastic job. That's what she does in class, too, most that's of the right. time. She's so good Graphics at Graphics and tweets, yep. Uh, game camera tonight. The game camera is the main camera right there. The shot uh, you're getting right now of the game camera of the uh, action going on between the Elves and the Rangers. That is Katie McHugh tonight. Sideline reporter again, Jake Kaltz, dressed as Santa Claus. Our hero cam is Jacob Coates. Hero cam is every time somebody scores or does something, uh, it will zero in right on the person that just did the play. You get a close-up. It's really cool. That's Jacob Coates tonight. Uh, and that is our production crew tonight. Again, thank you for all that you guys do. Again, we are uh, your play-by-play -play and your color commentators, but again, all the work, all the good stuff is done by the kids. Well, we are going to take a short break, and we'll be back with your second half after this. Walking home from our... Why do I like to live, Boyne? Why do I like to live, Boyne? Why am I proud to live, Boyne? Why I like to live, Boyne? I like to live, Boyne, because not a weekend passes in the summer without something new and exciting happening in our downtown. From Pooch Fest to Mountain Mayhem, Boyne Thunder to Boyne City Triathlon, to the simply amazing Boyne City 4th of July, I never want to be anywhere else. My name is Rainy McCune. I run cross country, play basketball, and softball here at Boyne City High School.
soccer player. Fantastic uh, soccer player commercial there. Evan Woodall making fun of the uh, flop in soccer and the uh, overacting of injuries. And hey, that was all Evan Woodall's idea. And what a great job he did at acting right there. I crack up every time I see that commercial. It's fantastic. Well, a uh, little, little uh, first half analysis. What uh, the, the best the best thing that happened so far that got the crowd into it in the first half uh, has to be that Mason Gardner dunk here. And here it is. You can see it on the replay. Good screen by Jacob Robinson. And he just takes it all the way in. Yeah, and I don't know if we'll see that again, can perhaps. We go back? But uh, you can see a couple things. This screen by Ager. You guys pause we'll it? We'll pause it maybe right here. The screen's actually going to the left side, uh, and the defender moves. Jacob starts to open up, open up J-Rob, and Gardner goes to the right. And the last thing you'll see, we can go here a few frames so Gardner gets in the lane there, but uh, the defense right there, I was a little late, but the defense, uh, you want to be over here as Gardner's coming down, and you can see him. He's standing under the hoop here. Gardner's already leaving the floor, so the rotation's a little bit late, and that's what enabled that dunk to happen. Can you and go, and go a lot back? of athleticism. Hey, yeah, go back again. Can we see that one again? And, and I'll show you there's a couple things defensively that. Let's pause it again right here. Pause it. And you can see, like, like Fritch was saying, this this screen is set on this side, and so this kid's trying to get over, and. St. John back here is going to help out. He's going to step on this side, and Gardner reads that. So now he's got everybody on this side, so he's got that open up to the right, and that's what he just went yeah. past everybody. There's that slow rotation by the fridge. Yeah, and okay. Again, one more time just to see that. Dunk. And you can see the rotation there coming from the corner is also a little late. Those guys had the right idea. They just didn't expect Gardner to explode through that hole quite like he did. Man, I thought my ears were kind of hairy. This, Ooh, this is those that, that's are fine. What's going on here? Is that is that acceptable? Uh, pay, what, pay attention. Go on. Let's Hustler on. in the Hollister yeah. is uh, <laughs> tweeting away. Look at that. <laughs> These guys are embarrassed. They know he got caught. Yeah. Yep. Nobody's uh, safe right there in the Rambler Rowdies. We got a telestrator. We can do anything we want right here. I think I'm gonna make this a Christmas tree right here. Like that, we already got some. Says, oh, some look at that, you guys down here. Where are the Where are the folks wearing the presents? Yeah, can you guys, yeah, put some. Grand put some. Uh, run over by a it's fantastic. Yep. Let's, home from our house <laughs> let's see if we can do a little. Uh, let's do a little Santa beard right here. Let's do this right here. See if you guys can get that on a face. Uh, oh, there's a day kid. She needs a beard. Santa beard. Yep. Oh. Okay, I got a yeah, I got a Santa beer right there. See if you guys can fit that onto somebody. That's good stuff. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> uh, see what happens when uh, people with college degrees get to play with a telestrator. That's ridiculous. Fun. That is, it is good fun. And there, the buzzer went off. You see, they all stand up, get ready to go. You see Dom Dom Santino walk by. He was our RSN stud last year, doing all of the all of the football games. Now running cross country in college. Well, we'll start of the second half here, and your third quarter is brought to you by Baker College. And Boyne City up 32 to 10. Here comes Mason Gardner, kicks out to Dom. You know he's going to take that. And you can see why he doesn't shoot those very often. But Kane wrestles it and goes up against Oh, yeah, you, Mail. you can see why they don't pass it to him out there because if he catches it, it's going up. He was already grinning. Just hope he doesn't catch look it at half court or something. He's grinning already knowing why did I take that. That's why I don't take that. But great foul by Kane going up against Mail, And that's Mail's third foul. And that's going to cause some problems for yeah. some Angus. You hate to see that happen. I mean, he's trying to block a shot. He's talking with the ref here about whether there was contact or not, perhaps. But, uh, you know, you'd like to see the kids stay in the game. That's what this, you know, I won't know if I'll call it a rivalry. We don't play St. Nicholas that often, but uh, you like to see him in the game. Dylan Williams with the put back. Aggressively getting that board and going right back up. I love seeing that when those bigs get the rebound to go right back up with it. Don't, don't put it on the floor. Don't do anything cute. Just go right back up. St. John is in trouble out there. Trying to spread the floor again like they did 
Yeah. Into the first half. The Boyne's in their half court man, but it looks like they've come out a little bit more aggressively. They've dropped back to half court or quarter court man, whatever you want to call it, but they're. There's a lot more pressure there than there was at times in the first half. So we'll watch that here as we go through the second. And, and we know, again, the ball handling woes of St. Ignis. That, that, that's tough to feel confident when you got all that pressure in your face. As Kane McPherson knocks down a three. Sugar. And you can see that St. Ignis just a little tentative and they got all that pressure right up. And now they're stuck. It takes them right out of the rhythm of their offense. Yep, you know, you come out of halftime, and this is uh, obviously Coach Redman just making a little a little adjustment, but as a team, St. Ignis, you come out expecting one thing, and, and you kind of get used to it, and things switch on you a little bit at halftime. That's tough. So as, as your team, this goes both ways, but as you grow as players and as a team, you get quicker to those types of adjustments. Speaking of quick, that was Archie going to the basket with his left hand. Little, uh, little and extra, a big smile once again. Little extra English, you know, I don't think he needed right there. I think he just would have gone with a normal layup. He would have made that. There's uh, St. John is going to draw the foul against Kane. And he, Ethan Hewitt's going to check in for Kane, who's got two fouls. And Jacob Ager's going to come in for Dylan Williams. As McPhee sits down, you know, I'm thinking about the offense so far in this game. And Boyne's had a bunch of layups. You know, obviously that's not what St. Ignis wants to give up. Um, but some of those have been in transition, some in half court. Uh, but that's been a difference so far. There's Ager going up, and Mayo blocked that one. Archie missed one. Mail got sucked right in there. Uh, you know, you sometimes you think it's going in. There's not going to be another rebound. We hit a couple of shots there, and he kind of gets sucked farther and farther under the basket. Nice back door by Eric Carson. Great read. You can see Mail was a little bit more tentative that time, trying to be aggressive with him. Well, he's got three block. fouls. Yeah, he's got to be careful. He's a big fella. Was Cosley with the ball still I'm very impressed with Cosley stepping in on Jake Baker for that charge Well, let's see he's back in the game for sure. Yep Here's Ager with the rebound Ager get rid of it. That's not where he wanted to catch the ball Gardner knocks it down for three not only can he dunk he can drop a three on you And that was one of the well, things that Gardner was gonna work on this year was his outside game if he's going to play at the next level, he's going to be outside. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, and his shots, his three-point shots so far tonight have been true jump shots. I mean, really nice jump shots. There's Archie on the baseline. And there, he didn't get tricky. He just squared up and made a layup. That's the layup we're looking for, for from him. Now, this is slowly getting out of hand here 45 to 12 there's the fridge this is that one and archie ah. there's a left hand yeah a little left hand finger roll gonna get a st ignis timeout well i believe uh, i don't know if we have a replay dialed up for us in the truck or not okay well, before we get to that uh, replay, let's go out to uh, a little word from our sponsor, Baker College. We'll be back after this. I'm a system administrator, and I'm very happy with the career path that I'm set on. This could be essentially the rest of my career. I enjoyed all the experiences that I had at Baker. So much of it was the Baker staff. I learned so much in such a short amount of time. Start your career today in computers, business, health, technology, human service, or education on campus or online. Visit baker.edu for more information. This 26 Sports and RSN Basketball presentation is brought to you by Wolverine Power Cooperative and Great Lakes Energy. Your local electric cooperative is looking out for you. All right, back at uh, live action here on the Rambler Sports Network. And uh, St. Ignis has the ball, and i got to tell you right here, out of that timeout, 
Preston Mail was standing right in front of the Ramble Rowdies to inbound the ball. And some of the girls were standing up about two bleachers up, two steps up, and they're looking eye to eye with him. That's how tall he is. And they were having a good time with him. Uh, and one of them one of the high five them, or maybe one of the boys wanted to high five him, and, and he gladly turned and high fived him. Tells you what kind of good kid he is. Uh, he, he's not not looking like he's getting made fun of. He just turned, and they were all admiring how tall he was, and he just gave him a high five. What a, a great look of sportsmanship by Preston Mail. Again, 4.0 kid, the leader of this team for St. Ignis, and uh, he wants to be a pharmacist when he grows up. That was a fantastic play there uh, yeah. by Dots. <laughs> Speaking of sportsmanship, nothing beats good sportsmanship. A great game in sports is when your team puts it all together, but it's not just how you execute it as an athlete, it's how you execute it as a person. It's showing good reflexes and respect. It's showing confidence and character. It's showing skillfulness and sportsmanship. Now that's a great game. Nothing beats good sportsmanship. A message from the MHSAA promoting the value and values of educational athletics. And, you know, this has been a game with uh, really quite a few fouls, at least in the first half, a couple of them very hard. But uh, we've had no chippiness whatsoever. These guys have been great. There's male throwing the ball to the ref, and uh, we enjoy that. Yeah, it's, uh, again, we, we build up these rivalries. We try to pipe it up and get everybody in. You know, intense and going into it. And, but, man, these kids all keep their cool, keep their sportsmanship, and that's what we like to see. And a 49 to 14 in our Baker College third quarter here. And there's Dodd trying to get something off in there, and he doesn't get something up that meant anything, actually. And Max Vondra. Going, going faster than the basketball. Yeah. Here's Mason Gardner lining up that three. And I don't know if we can roll that back just well. Maybe we got a game going on here, but uh, there you go. Get a chance to look at it. You can see this pass goes from Carson all the way up to Florida. Ager in, the, in no man's land, and Ager got rid of that sucker as fast <laughs> as he could. Uh, found Gardner there for the three. Uh, well, he didn't want to have to dribble, that's for sure. There's Vondra missing a three right in front of the Rambler yeah. Rowdies. He uh, looked right over the bench when that one went up. Uh, <laughs> Coach Redmond's clapping for him. That's good. <laughs> it, it actually was a great play. It was a nice kick out, and Vax was v wide open. So that's not a bad shot to take, but uh, you saw him kick, kick deep over there. We have a quick tweet from Archie Hank, team at Team BCVI. Great game so far. Let's finish it out. 3 0. RSN Live. Who's that? Archie Hank. Any idea? Uh, Big Arch. Big Arch? Yep. Must be. Here's the E train going in. And the E is going to draw a foul. Well, this is a good game, like we said, to work on some things, build some confidence. These guys, the Ramblers, have a hellacious matchup tomorrow against McBain, the McBain Ramblers. And McBain is is a team that is on fire right now. They have got some studs. Uh, they played Traverse City St. Francis and beat them by, what, 30 or 20 or something like that? Um, and Traverse City St. Francis is pretty tough. So it'll be a good test right now if, if Ramblers close this one out at 3-0 and to see how good they are. Uh, against McBain tomorrow in yeah. McBain. As Coach Redmond said, you know, McBain's beatable for Boyne, but they're going to have to put it all together. They're going to have to play cleaner basketball maybe than they have tonight as we see a turnover there on the break. Um, but that, we'll yeah, see it, what happens. We'll see where we're at. Um, you know, for the year, the kids are building some confidence, and um, but we'll see where we're at tomorrow night and how they match up against McBain. Well, Preston Mayo just had a nice jump shot and got a steal. Yeah, we got St. Ignace a little man pressure here, too. J Rob lost the handle and out of bounds. Now you might get to say Jacob Robinson for three. I hope so. <laughs> I already said it, though, just in case. Well, mass substitution coming up here for Boyne. 
as Coach Redmond's going to again get some experience for all his players. Santa, what do you got for us? I'm here with Jack Snyder, Boynton City Football All-Star, Pee Wee 1 or 2? Two? 2, I think. <laughs> Pee Wee 2. So, Jack, what are you asking for Christmas this year? I'm not really sure. Not sure? Maybe next box, I don't know. Okay, I'll go back to the North Pole and talk to the Elves about what we can do about that, okay? Hey, that kid was more unsure Thank about you. his answers than Kelsey Claus was about his questions. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. Uh, good Thank you, Jack. Good little interview by Santa Kelts. Uh, see what we can do about getting the next box. Huh? Lucas Day. We got something better in the next box. We got Lucas Day for three. Oh, going up for three. Oh. Missed the three again. That would have been Rambler Rowdies all night. Well, this is tough. These guys are excited to be in the game. And, uh, you know, Coach Redmond's going to have to try and settle this down a little bit. Make sure they know, hey, you got to play basketball. That's stuff we work on every day in practice. That, that's what we're going to show out here during the game. Yeah, and you don't want to turn it into a, a circus because St. Ignis is still out there working hard, and you don't want to make a mockery of that by throwing it to Lucas Day and trying to have him jack threes up all night. So play basketball. Get your minutes. this ball. They're trying to get some work in here. Get it to mail if they can. Good defense by Carson. Yeah, Mail's not Mail's physical, but he's not in that post trying to get the ball. You no, know, yeah, he's not an aggressive post player. Just like you said, a big body. If he got aggressive, he could move some people around. Under 30 seconds to go. This is what they did right at halftime there. Spread the floor, slow it down. That defensive pressure by Boyne City is going to last, what do you say, about 10 seconds? And then it's going to get kind of, they're going to get tired a little bit, and that's when things start to open up. So if they can be patient enough and take care of the ball for those first 10 seconds on that defense, uh, they can get a layup. And that's what Mayo did right there, and he draws the foul against, against Archie. Okay, we are going to Santa right now. There's a uh, yeah, we we bought to with the human Santa. Christmas tree back to live action. Eric Carson screen for Lucas, he's got a three at the top of the key, and that one's no good. Put back by Dom Archie. Good athletic move that right there. Really yeah. Really a nice putback. He stayed up there for a little yeah. bit, huh? Dom Archie having a good game. That's the end of your Baker College third quarter with Boynton City way up 53 to 17. And we are going to take a short break. We will be back with your fourth quarter after this. Why do I like to live Boyne? Why do I love to live Boyne? I love to live Boyne because of the way that the community comes together to support a greater cause. The support and involvement we had in our recent football jersey fundraiser for the Cancer Crusaders was really something that made me proud to live in Boyne City. My name is Sydney McLeod and I am a student here at Boyne City High School. And you can see the Rambler Rowdies here at the end of the third quarter. They are full into Christmas caroling right now. Got the whole place going into Christmas carols. That sounded pretty good, actually. They've been practicing, I think. It's still Lucas going. Day, nice pass to Connor Gabos, and he missed it. Good little uh, assist action there for Lucas Day. Well, it's an interesting lineup uh, for Boyne. We've got Carson, Gardner, Gabos, Dillwill, and Day. Well, 
the fourth quarter, uh, brought to you by the Jody Fritchie Agency. And like I said earlier, man, as soon as she got that position, we, my family, switched over to her for our insurance, and she's already saved us a ton of money. Well, she likes what she does. She likes working with people, and uh, she's enjoyed the change. As long as she keeps saving me money, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> Eric Carson with the steal here. He's going to take that all the way and get the foul. And Dillwill trying to follow it up. And they're going to wave that one off. I don't know if you noticed that or not, but Carson got up. He did. He really did. Okay, we're going to take it over to our sideline reporter, Jacob Keltz, one more time. I'm here with Evan Woodall. So, Evan, what does it mean if Lucas hits a three? Like, how big is that here? Well, I didn't really hear the question, so I'm asking you to repeat it. But okay, when Lucas hits a three, how big of a deal is that? Lucas Day is a big idol of mine, so to see Lucas out on the court, it just really, really just makes my heart so happy. And to watch him hit a three, it's been like on my bucket list. So I'm super excited to watch that right now. Well, I'm sure Lucas and Evan are on the nice list this year. Back to you guys. Well, yeah, what, what is it like when Lucas hits a three? I'm not sure we know yet, but I <laughs> sure do hope we find out. Like we said, he is a fan favorite here. And to see him get minutes and then to actually make a shot would be fantastic. Well, to be honest, he he's a fan favorite because he's just a great kid. He's got a great personality, great work ethic, a uh, good student, and he's just fun to be around. That's why everybody likes the kid. Yeah, and he, he rarely sees the floor, and so it's kind of nice to get him those minutes. Well, there's a timeout. They're going to go back to Christmas caroling right now. Rambler Rowdies are back at it. You can hear the music start up again. We'll let you hear them. your typical musical choice for the basketball game but you gotta like it here the last week last couple days of uh, school and basketball before break getting in the spirit yeah kids are excited now Max Vondra in right now Mason Gardner he's gonna take it in he's gonna lob it up to T. Will oh, oh that was a great play oh my nicely run Wow, he's, he's open right now. His grandparents are watching. That was a fantastic play. Coach Redmond said they've been working on some of those plays that yeah, they we'll, drew up. We'll take a look at that here uh, in a minute, I'm sure. But what you'll see is uh, this play is set up because Gardner's already thundered one, and he draws the defense. Look at Mayo. Oh, man. And LaVille are looking the other way. We'll back yeah. it up here just in so you can see the defenders looking here. I'm messing up on the screen, but uh, that opens his whole side up for Dillwill to come in there and uh, nearly put one down. That was a great uh, backboard pass for Gardner. That's hard to do. We've all tried that a bunch of times in practice when we try to dunk and stuff like that. But, man, he in the game, we got one shot at it, and Gardner put it perfectly up off the backboard. There, there, that's a cool-looking play, but there are a lot of moving parts in that play you've got guys spreading out the defense you got Gardner drawing players and you've got to go off the backboard so that's that's fun it's fun to work on that stuff as a team uh, try and put it together yeah I hope uh, I hope it builds some confidence for these guys again huge matchup tomorrow against McBain so I don't know if they'll be able to run that kind of stuff tomorrow but it's always fun to have that in your toolkit there's Mayo getting a little aggressive now Banking it and following his own shot. He's gonna get fouled by Dylan Williams Yeah, Dylan's got to do a little bit better job putting his body on mail and he's gonna hear about that right now We have a short message here from the MHSAA the broadcast of today's game is a copyrighted presentation of the MHSAA Rambler Sports Network in Boyne City High School. No reproduction, retransmission, or other distribution of the descriptions or accounts of this game may take place without the express written consent of the MHSAA and Boyne City High School. Well, in uh, talking with the team 
Richie. Remember, we sat down and talked with the, all these players for Boyne City, and across the board, we asked them about their goals as a team, goals as, as players individually, and across the board, every one of them, their goal as a team was to win districts again. And uh, that would be three in a row here at Boyne City. And Coach Redmond has done a great job of, of he's, he's like the Tom Izzo here. He, he gets them playing at the right time of year, and he's got district titles. Yeah, and, he, and that builds year after year, and, and you said it. Uh, I think I think there's a legit comparison with Tom Izzo in the sense that uh, he does a fantastic job building his program up and up and up towards the end of the year. And he's got that on his mind every game, every halftime, every time out. That's what he's working towards is the end of the year, getting things uh, working smoothly. And like you said, it, it builds because now these kids come in, and we talked about this the last couple of years uh, on the Rambler Sports Network, is these kids see this. When they're young, they watch district titles being won. And they, when they get up here and they have their time in the spotlight, they want to win a district title. And like I said, across the board, I'm holding the sheet right now of the, of the team goals of every one of these players, it was to win a district title. Some want to go even further, but everybody had win districts on their a goal sheet. Well, and, and as we know, that that's, doesn't start with ninth, 10th, or 11th grade. That stuff starts younger and having the program, these kids are working towards that. They don't necessarily know it when they're younger, but uh, having a unified program that's all working on the same stuff pays dividends in the long term. Well, and we both did it when uh, Coach Redmond started winning these district titles, when they bring the fire trucks and bring the teams back into town. Uh, I was getting my kids when they were three years old, four years old, and we were throwing them in a the car, and we were following the fire trucks just so they could be a part of that excitement and ask questions of why, why are the fire trucks out? Well, we won a championship in basketball. So it's already starting at that age. They all pay attention that young. And when they start playing basketball here at Boyne City, that's the expectation. There's t Rock. J-Rob with a putback after almost uh, <laughs> eating it last time. Yeah. But, uh, and, and, you know, back to the district championships, that's a that's a tribute to Boyne, too, that the community spends the time to come out, the families come out, the uh, firemen, the police, they come out and they spend their time to bring the team back into town after something like that. And that's, that's really cool to watch, that watch is, the community do all that together. That's something special. You and I both did not grow up in small towns. And... When we came here and saw that kind of atmosphere, it, it's it's kind of cool. I mean, you get all caught up in it. We were we were athletes. We played, uh, but this is amazing to see small towns like this uh, back everybody up. It's just really kind of a cool feeling. So quickly about RSN, the Rambler Sports Network is a division of Boyne City's award-winning visual imaging progr production program known around northern Michigan as Team BCVI. That's Boyne City Visual Imaging. Boyne City's visual imaging program is one of many career and technical education programs offered as part of the SHARM ISD career and technical education programs. Team BCI, BCVI's RSN is a perfect example of SHARM CTE programs, training tomorrow's workers today by exposing students to real worker, real world experiences. Good move there by J-Rob. Caught from uh, Jacob Coates in your game camp. Uh oh. They're going to call the fridge, I think, for an illegal screen. There's Lucas Day in there with the blue shoes. You can see him. Oh, you got to give credit to St. Ignace. Obviously, this, this score is not all that comfortable, but they, they really have continued to play hard. Uh, they're working on their game. They, I haven't seen any of these kids hanging their heads, and, you know, that's really cool. I, I appreciate that. I think it looks great. Yeah, I, I would agree with Coach Brandstorm saying these kids work hard. They don't quit. There's no quit out there. Um, Lucas Day almost brought the house down that with that one. That was nearly the excitement of a Gardner dunk for a Lucas Day missed three-pointer. <laughs> that is pretty cool. <laughs> That's well put. That's well put, Coach. Well, yeah, it's uh, 30 seconds to go here in the game, and you can hear the Rambler Rowdy still being rowdy. And again, I got to give all the credit to St. Ignace and their coach uh, for being classy here in this lopsided victory. Um, 
and appreciate talking with Coach Brandstorm, and he just seems like a great guy, and, and I think the program is is going nowhere but up in the future. And real quickly, uh, if you take a look here at our Rambo Rowdy section, there are a lot of there are a lot of kids up there. Yeah, I shouldn't you they be forget home? the size of this school and how many kids showed up tonight. That's uh, and coordinated colors. Look at that. That's right, man. They they know what they're doing. Well, that's it. Boyne City's going to just nip St. Ignace, 59 to 19. And there, like you said, Fritchie, there's our Ramble Rowdies, all color-coordinated. They're louder now than they were in the first quarter. It's a Tuesday night, by the way. It is Tuesday. <laughs> it's, Monday. It's a Monday, it's a Monday night. night. Monday night. Even better. Look Shouldn't at that. Shouldn't these kids be studying? Uh, they're heading to the library after. That's right. Library will be open after this. Well, a good, a good win here, and I think uh, we are going to try to get... Coach Redmond for some post-game uh, thoughts here from, oh, actually, no, we have, uh, we have Lucas Day. Lucas Day is going to get interviewed by Santa Celts. Let's take it over to uh, Jacob right now. Jacob, take it away. I'm here with Lucas Day. <laughs> Lucas, 59-19. How do you feel about this win? It's a good win. We won 59-19 there. You know, they got some guys out, but they're an athletic team. It's a good win. Lucas, you got quite a few threes. You got quite a few threes. You just couldn't sink any. How do you feel about your performance tonight? Are you happy with it? Yeah, I'm happy that the team won. And last but not least, Lucas, what do you want for Christmas? Animal crackers. Okay, I'll head back to the... <laughs> I have some animal crackers in my pocket. I'll give them to you after the, after the game, okay? Thank you. Back to you guys. Well, Lucas was excited about his performance. He was excited about the animal crackers. Yeah. He wasn't very excited about Archie stealing his, uh, <laughs> stealing his bright lights there. Uh, what a, what a likable kid, man. He's a, he's a blast. But, uh, well, again, a very lopsided uh, victory for, for Boyne City. Um, our next broadcast, again, Friday, January 6th. That will be after our... Uh, Christmas break where we're going to take on Harbor Springs. We're going to broadcast both the girls and the boys game. We're going to do a doubleheader that night. Uh, we'll be able to see the girls in action for the first time and uh, we're real excited about that. What have you heard about the girls team? Well, we're looking forward to You know, it's the beginning of the year and uh, like these teams trying to find their way, figure out the personnel, their X's and O's. Uh, it's going to be exciting to get out there and uh, watch, watch the girls play. That's right. That'll be uh, January 6th. That's 1.0 six is going to be the password again the month dot day format and uh, hope you guys tune in next january 6 for the uh harbor springs game again i'm andy bryant and this is aaron fritchie signing off for the rambler sports network thanks for tuning in we'll leave you with mason gardner's dunk i take the seasick crocodile mr grinch you're a power of sinister grinch you're a nasty, wacky, wacky, spot with moldy purple spots. You're a heart is full of unwashed socks. Your soul is your full soul of is an appalling dump. Overflowing with the, the most three words that best describe you are as follows. And I quote, stink, stank, stunk. You're a rotter, Mr. Grinch. You're the king of sinful sots. Your heart's a dead tomato splotched with moldy purple spots, Mr. Grinch. Your soul is an appalling dump heap, overflowing with the most disgraceful assortment of deplorable rubbish imaginable, mangled up in tangled up knots. You nauseate me. Mr. Grinch, with a nauseous super nos, you're a crooked, jerky jockey, and you drive a car.